Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland. In this episode, we'll be reviewing the PS Mod 27LC wheel button box from Penguin RC. Made from stiff G10 and PLA filament, it has a pretty trick way to deliver a good function count. Could this be a good candidate for your custom wheel build? Time to put it through the SRG's review process and see how it does. So, let's get to it. Now let's take a closer look at this button plate from Penguin RC. And they call it a wheel button box, which is, you know, it's kind of a box. So either way, whatever you want to call it. Now this is, the one I'm reviewing is a PS Mod 27 LC. And I'll show you a picture of it here. There's also a PS Mod 27. And here's a picture of that one. Now the basic differences here are that this one here has a G10 plate on the front and a G10 plate on the back. It also uses G10 levers here for the material on the shifter levers. And we're also using G10 for the housing assemblies on each side. So these little side plates here are also G10. Now, the, and also, by the way, this has a nylon knob on it and some plastic housings around the buttons. And the PS Mod 27 with the carbon fiber on the front and rear has aluminum surrounds and also has an aluminum knob here with a blue indicator on it this one you can actually paint this blue if you wanted to <laughs> but there's no blue indicator on this one so and on the back you'll see the carbon fiber obviously on the front and the back we also see carbon fiber on the levers and carbon fiber on these side pieces where again on this lc it's the graphite material or not graphite rather g10 this is not graphite it's g10 now the g10 is a very stiff strong material and yep, yeah, I mean, they use it for knife handles. So that would tell you just how tough they are. So I think it's a good, good economy or economical rather selection to make here to keep these button boxes or button plates in a reasonable price. And this one, it comes in at $300. The PS Mod 27 comes in at $425 for the extra goodies you get with those. Right. So that's about the, the differences. And other than that, yeah, everything looks about the same. So Let's talk about the buttons. It doesn't look like we have many buttons, but there's a lot of functionality built into this wheel. We have four buttons up here, obviously, and they do have some nice silk screening on here with our little penguin logo up here. And of course, we have some pit and different things that they put on here, mark, boost, radio. And we got some silk screening also on these buttons here for our plus and our minus. And on the selector knob, our dial, you see it says off there and it has other things too. So, you know, whatever you you want to, you can actually map stuff to what's on these, but it, typically I don't, but at least there's uh, some, some stuff on there for you to use if you want to use those. I'll try to keep my fingers out of the way here. And so you guys can see what's going on. It's the usual stuff, you know, trash control, you know, plus or minus, uh, break bias selections, you know, plus or minus, those kind of things. So there's actually 12 positions to this. now. This is where the functionality comes in. Turn this all the way back to the what I call the home, which is off. Right? And here's how I do it anyway. Of course, you can do it any way you want to. Every time I turn the selector, it changes the functions of what these two buttons are doing. So I would start out with, like I have one, as you'll see when I'm in my driving video, I start out with the first or off will be my black box selection mode. So I can use these plus or minuses to scroll through my different black boxes on iRacing. Then once I get to the black box I want, then I will turn this one click and then I will be able to make a, a scroll up and down that black box to what I want to select. Once I'm there, I'll click it one more. So I'm calling that the second click. So I go one, two clicks. The second the click will give me the ability to adjust the value that I've selected up or down, right? Increase it or decrease it. So that gives me, if we got 12 positions here, 24 different things we can do with these. So 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So we got 28 buttons, really. Now, the only thing is, you're going to have to remember what you've assigned to your little encoder here or your selector. So I remember it as I know my black boxes are the first starting position plus one, two clicks to do whatever I want to with the black boxes. Then I might have traction control number four, plus or minus, or a fuel curve, you know, plus or minus, brake bias, ARB, that kind of thing. And I just have to remember where that is. Now, you can imagine you might get lost. You just adjusted something and you're racing, obviously. You're driving. You've got other things to think about, and you forgot where you were. Well, the easy thing to do, or at least for me, was just to spin it back 
to where it was before. I'm at the default, my starting position now. And let's say I had trashing control and four clicks. Then I just go one, two, three, four. Then I can adjust my trashing control again. And you could probably do that very quickly, as you imagine, while you're in the car. One, two, three, four. Then I can go back and adjust them my trashing control. Or five, go to brake bias or whatever I have on there. So if I get lost, I can always come home and then recount them. Because doing this doesn't do anything as far as inputs. So you're safe to do that. Anyway, that's how I did it. You can do it any way you want to. So 28 buttons. And yeah, then we'll come around the back here and look at the shifters. That gives us two more which is a total of 30 functions. Yeah, 24, 5, 6, 7, 8, yeah, 30. So that's a lot of functions for this little box, I think. And the shifters themselves, let's, well, now that we're here, we'll talk about what they are. First off, these are spring units. Now you still find spring shifters on race cars. They're not that uncommon for race cars really still. But a lot of people are using magnetic shifters and of course my personal preference is for those too. But these definitely get the job done and they do have a big advantage of over the magnetic shifters and that is they are very stealthy. You using this shifter, you can even hear it. All you hear is the button, hear the click of the button, the little switches inside. Yeah, so it's very quiet. So if you need a stealthy shifter set up, then the spring ones are definitely the way to go. You, that way you won't disturb your significant other or somebody trying to study in the next room. But yeah, it's very quiet. But again, the other side of that coin is it's not much tactile feel to this. All right, so it's, it's got a good stiff spring in there, but it's just, you know, the tactile feel that you have in something like obviously a magnetic shifter is totally two different worlds, but they're going to be a lot louder. But if you're, you know, down the hall in the closet or in, in your mom's basement racing or something like that, then it probably is not much, that big of an issue. But these actually work well. I've never had a problem with them. Um, yeah, so I can't complain about it as far as the functionality of it. Now we have some nice two and a half millimeter thick carbon fiber paddles here and they get the job done they have a nice glossy finish to them there so it's a nice pattern in here it's not a, a, a you know squiggly weave anywhere to be seen so it's a, a good quality carbon it looks like and of course we have some slots cut in here to be able to adjust the paddles in and out for fine tuning for major tuning we can actually slide these whole this whole pot out for the the actual shifter itself and the shifter itself is made of we got g10 i said before on here on the on this part here but we also have g10 on both sides of the shifter housing themselves right here. Then we have a PLA printed, 3D printed piece here that wraps around the bottom. It's going to be hard to see it with the lights there, but it's down inside of, let me get my right side of my thing here, down here. All right, so that's the PLA piece there. And above that, we see the G10 in a bar there that keeps it all held together on both sides with these screws. Right, so yeah, again, they, they get the job done. There's, again, the, the typical of this kind of thing. The tactile feedback is um, uh, not as strong, obviously, as a magnet, a magnet would be. We also have these little cut-ins here, so you know what pluses minus uh, are as far as upshift or downshift, if you forgot. <laughs> so, and I don't really mind this kind of deal. I, uh, I compare this quickly with the Fanatic ones that have bigger pluses and a, a bigger minus right at the tip. And I, I, in that review, I actually said something about that, that, you know, not a big fan of that because you know it's so big that it actually takes away some of the structural integrity from this but these are so small and this is such a short short paddle here i don't think it really matters right what else can we talk about here uh let's see i guess that's pretty much it isn't it paddles yeah and the cord oh yeah let's talk about the cord it's uh, not that long <laughs> it's uh you know, it, you can stretch it out, obviously, but you don't want to stretch it out too much. It's got a nice cable gable system. We'll see once we do look inside. But you're probably going to need an extension. Uh, I know I did, but I need them for a lot of them because my computer's further away than most people have theirs because of the rig I run. And yeah, so again, you could actually source a longer one if you wanted to and just if it has a plug in here and we'll see what, how that works once we get inside and just run a longer one if you want. But yeah, the plug that it comes with, not that long. Now, one more thing. Before I finish up here, this has a, well, two more things. This is a PLA, and by the way, this sandwich here is a PLA printed material, okay? And there's also a bar here under the shifter. I meant to show you that. See this bar here? It runs the length of this plate here, and it comes out the other end. See, there it is on the other end. And that is also a PLA printed piece that, that it actually uses, uh, serves as a mounting point for these shifters. And we'll see that once we get inside. We also have this PLA 3D printed piece, and you can see it's got some nice reinforcements in there left in when the print. 
and that fits right in here like this. So if you have the shifters, and you see how it won't it won't fall if you have the shifters spaced like this, which I'm not. I'm going to actually widen these out because they're way too short for me. So this actually will hang there. It's got these little grooves in it. See, there's little notches, so it'll hang there for you so it doesn't fall off. But if you move the shifters out past that for your own shifter reach adjustment, then that's kind of irrelevant. But it's still a spacer that we're going to use to keep the back of the hub that we're mounting on here, or the adapter for the hub, it's from striking or interfering with the shifter movement. So we have that. Now, the bolts that come with this are socket head caps, very long, plenty length to get through this like that. All right, and still with the spacer on it. Put the spacer on. There we go. So there's a lot of screw here. <laughs> there we go. So there's a lot of screw sticking out there. All right. And we'll have a, obviously going to have a wheel on here, though, and the wheel will take up some of that space. Now, Unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, I mean, it depends on what the wheel you have. If you cut you drill holes in your own wheel, you buy a wheel and you drill your own holes, then this just works just fine. And it will still work with what I'm going to talk about here is a lot of wheels will have these countersunk or counterboard holes in them, right? And they take these flathead screws, right? So when they fall in there, they're nice and flat with the surface of the top part of our hub or the spokes rather. Now. If you just drill your hose cap sockets are fine, but this fits better. And I just want to point that out that if you, you know, have that kind of thing, or if you're going to use, I use these little beauty plates. This is a turn racing one. Yeah, the same thing. It fits in there. Probably because it's carbon, I wouldn't want to really crank down on a, you know, a socket head like that. So just something that I, you know, noticed. And I, I've, I've sourced some other screws that I've, I've got a ton of them on hand. No big deal. So that this will work fine for me. But not that these don't work. But when you're going against carbon fiber and stuff and you're really torquing them down, you can it can cause issues with, you know, cracking your carbon or something. That's why these flat heads work a little better for that. So if that's your situation, there you go. Now, let's talk about the wheel fitment. Now, this is the R20 wheel. All right, and I'm trying to line this up for you so you can see. We've got plenty of room here on this R20, and this is from Turn Racing, one of my favorite wheels, actually. And you can see that it's lining up with the holes. We've got plenty of room over here for our selector. All the buttons are clearing everything quite well. But there is a little bit of cover up here with this wheel on the silk printing there, there and over here. All right, so I just thought I'd show you that. Uh, really doesn't matter to me because I usually don't use what they put on these on, on these button plates anyway. So yeah, I'm constantly switching things around too. So uh, it doesn't really matter to me. It doesn't affect performance in any way, but just something I wanted to show you. now. The R1 is not supposed to fit, but it actually does fit. With some experimentation, I found that out. So here's the R1. Now, this is the original one from Turn Racing. Before he came out with the R20, I'm trying to get these holes lined up properly here and then be able to hold it. Now, the, one, the deal with this one is, with the screws in, I, I had the screws in before. I'm just not going to do that right here. But with the screws in, it's very tight fit, but it does fit. And we still have some covering up of our silk printing. And you can see how close that selector is now, but it still spins without interference. So you can actually use an R1 if you have one with this LC or obviously the other PS Mod 27. Right, so just want to show you a little bit of wheel fitment there as far as what we're gonna use. I'm gonna use the R20 on this, but before we get to all that, what we're gonna do is go ahead and take the back off and take a look inside and yeah, see how, how he made this thing. All right, so now I get to take this thing apart and see what's inside. Now, this is a very easy thing to do. There are some, these are not hex. These are actually torque screws that they're using on this assembly. And I'm just gonna use my little uh, wire Torx. It's a T8, a little shot of it there. And take these screws out. Now we're gonna have to take out this screw, this screw, the two top ones and the center one to get this to separate. All right, so that's what we're going to do. They're very short screws. They come out very quickly. So I'm going to just go ahead and do this while you guys are watching. And yeah, you can see how easy this is. It's almost like you had thumb screws or something on here. <laughs> they come off so easily. All right, we'll get that other screw in a second here. All right. Now these are very small screws, as you can see. Very teeny. 
not much to them. And little flatheads because they fit in the little counter bore sockets, right? All right. And keep those somewhere where we're going to lose them. Actually, we have a center one we have to take off too. So we can grab that one. Then everything should come right off. Now, there is a cable gable piece in here for this USB cable. You see it sticking in there. See it kind of sticking out right there in that hole there. And it will come off. So just be mindful of that when you're taking this off. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of look in it. Like usually when you do this, you want to look inside a little bit as you're pulling it apart to make sure you're not stressing out any wires or anything. Get my USB out of the way. Yeah. So you can see in there, everything's looking good. All right. So here we go. Let's take a look at what's going on in here. Now, again, this is a PLA printed middle section or sandwich section, if you will. And you can see that some reinforcement has been left in and spacers for the tightening down your hub and your, your wheel together, sandwiching this in there. So we've got some nice reinforced ribs here left in the, the 3D print that's going to give that some extra support that you, you would want, obviously. Now, here's the electronics. The first thing we look at or can see, actually what I'm going to do for that, before that rather, is go ahead and take this plate off. Now, this is the shifter plate, the back plate, and this is mounted to this 3D piece. We'll take a closer look at that in a second. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and unplug these shifter wires so I can have a better access and show you guys better. So I'm just going to get my finger in here and kind of pull up on the shifter wire. Hopefully it'll just slide. There we go. Slide right out. And you might want to take a picture with your cell phone or something before you start taking wires off of these pins on this circuit board because you want to make sure you get them back on the same way. So I'll go ahead to the other shifter wire and do the same thing. I don't even want you guys to see this, but it usually slides right off. Uh, <laughs> I'm not <laughs> able to show you too well, but it's, it just kind of slides off. So there we go. There's slid. Now that we're done with that, it can separate, right? So here's the little plugs that we were actually manipulating. And we'll be able to see the pin sitting here now that we can handle it like this. All right. So this looks like, I'm not sure what kind of which board this is, but it kind of looks like a teensy board to me. And of course, you can take the teensy boards and program them as USB conversion, you know, and a lot of people use them for that. And we've got these pins sitting in here that are actually attached to the pins or the holes that are in the teensy board so that we can plug in all these button plugs and wires. Very neatly done here. I mean, there's, there's not a lot of wires hanging everywhere. I think it's a pretty a good job that he's done here. And we have also this encoder or rotary our selector. And this is a very nice one. This is actually, if you can see in here, it has these little, every time you, you click it or turn it, I'm trying to get so the light's not so bright. It has little resistors on each, on each section here. Of course, they're all different values, right? So that we know where we click to. But this, this is kind of set up, and I don't know if you guys are familiar with that kind of thing. Let's go this way with it. This is the kind of setup we typically see on like the high-end audio volume pots where they have just a, a click when you select instead of just a smooth rotation on them. And some people prefer you know, uh, this type of setup because the quality is supposed to be better or that kind of thing. Of course, that's all subjective. But anyway, so we have little resistors in between each one of these. Very nice dial here. And it's actually very stiff to you even hearing it clicking. It has a very good feel to it. There's no, not any real play in it. Yeah, this is a, a really a good, a good selector here he's using. Right. Uh, and of course, it's got its own plug here because the, the functions that it's doing plugged into another piece of the Teensy board over here or, or whatever it is. And now he, I was telling you about the USB cable. And yeah, this has a little plug on it. It has the mini USB plug. And there's a 3D piece on top of that that's screwed down on top to secure it from coming out. And yeah, you could just take this off, unplug that, and run a different cable if you wanted to. As long as the diameter of that cable's not too thick that it won't go through this little there's a little guide cut into the 3d or left out of the 3d print rather and yeah then we have this little piece here that's acting kind of like a gable cable gable rather or a routing piece and that will actually come out so it just snaps in and out i'm going to leave it in for now because i really don't need to take it out so we'll just leave it there so yeah not much else to see here we've got uh, now on this plate here on the front. I want to show you that. I missed that on the closer look. You can see the silvery bits in these holes. 
those are actually inserts or threaded inserts so that only three of these holes are actually going all the way through this plate through the wheel through the plate and through the hub adapter on the back so you have three of these that are kind of just not holes i mean they'll hold this plate on they'll help hold this plate on but yeah they're they're actually some threaded pieces now we flip it around we can see that there's some round pieces here you can see that one there and we have two more at the top here over here and over here so that's where those threaded inserts are actually put into right and of course this is this part of the print is really where all the load bearing is going to happen of course around the perimeter and in here so anything else you want to talk about here i don't think so so a well done job i think and yeah uh, an economy of space don't have that many wires because we're using the selector setup here this is, works very well actually so yeah i like what i'm seeing here now what we'll do first off these shifter handles are way too far in for me when i mount this to a wheel for to reach so i'm going to adjust them so there is adjustment in here and this is how that system works first off here is a 3d printed pla piece a bar that runs the length of this right across here and it's on the bottom too and is using that as a mounting point for these shifter assemblies we have two screws on the bottom two screws on the top for each one of these assemblies so if we want to move this over we take these screws out and move it over and take the obviously the other ones out and move it over so that they're equal pretty simple thing to do here and on the other side of this 3d printed piece obviously we that's where our holes are that is holding that g10 plate on right so what we're going to do next is come back and adjust the shifters i'm going to put them out as far as i can get them and see how that process goes okay let's go ahead and adjust these shifters now it's easy pretty easy to see what we're doing here we've got holes that run each way on the top and bottom here of this pla 3d printed piece and we've got four screws two on the bottom two on the top that we're going to take out and then we can slide this whole shifter assembly anywhere we want and we can take a look at it too so i'm going to go ahead and do that and again just four screws they cut again it's the same screws we saw in the look inside when i took those off very small you know they're they're short so it only takes a couple seconds to get this done so i like that part of the way this is built so we've got two more to go and again these are the torx t8 size screws all right get those out of there for they fall out and i lose them so here's what the shifter looks like when it's taken out again we can see that there's some g10 everywhere <laughs> it's on the bottom here it makes up the side plates on either side and of course the lever itself that everything is moving on or is actually you can see it pivoting on this pin back here you can see that pin through there so when we move it the whole thing moves down and the switch is not going to be easy to see because it's tucked down in there where no light can get to it but anyway you can see the bottom of the switch there so a nice assembly here looks like it's going to last a long time i think <laughs> okay so we're going to mount this to the further furthest holes that i can on the outboard Oop, you know we can actually see this right here and right there right simple enough we just slide it down to where we need it to be and then we'll put the screws in i'm going to drop a couple of screws down in here because you can see it, it's actually falling down past where the 3d piece is here or the 3d pieces past where the flange is on the shifter so there's always uh, different ways to do this so i'm just going to kind of lay these in here and then kind of pick up on this plate that will pick up the 3d part and bring it up to the screws and present them to where i need them hopefully so let's go ahead and see if we can get once you get one started i'll go across and get the other one and then once i have those two in you're good to go it's just a matter of tightening them up now as long as they don't you don't tighten it too far down it pushes out the ones that aren't in yet <laughs> all right so there we go that's pretty easy isn't it this is really easy to change where these shifters are located at i like that right so there we have it and you can see the difference now so we've got a lot more space here than, <laughs> than we did before so i should be able with my grip on the wheel this should 
be perfect for me, I'm thinking. Or it might even be too long. I mean, this, this goes out a, a, quite a ways. So, yeah, easy enough to adjust the shifters. And actually, we'll go ahead and do the other one. It's so easy while you're sitting here watching me do it. So you can see me do two of them. Again, this couldn't be any easier. In fact, I'm going to take the last screw and kind of leave it in there and then slide the whole thing out. You guys can watch what I'm doing here. Once I disengage from that piece, there we go. I'm going to slide it out. Again, bring the present this back up to it. Make sure I'm looking at the right hole. And then get it started. And now it'll sit there, right? And I can go ahead and get my other screws, put them in the holes. If I can get them in the holes, is this small stuff? I got small hands. Imagine somebody with some big hands with it big fingers and stuff messing with this stuff it's not that easy of course sometimes it helps to kind of start it on the on your driver and that helps you guide it in so that helps things along a little bit as it were okay let's get these guys started i'm missing one one dropped but there it is no big deal we'll get it back in and there it goes right on okay so there we have it Snug them up a bit. You don't have to torque down a lot. Remember, we're screwing down into a piece of printed PLA, right? And there it is. And, of course, we're going to be able to see into the, the wheel now. <laughs> so once we get this back on, we can, we're going to be able to, let's go ahead and just kind of lay it there, see a lot more of the electronics in there. Of course, once we get the hub and everything in there, it's going to cover it up some. But yeah, that was pretty easy to do. Now what we'll do is go ahead and put this back on. And of course, I've got to get my wires back on. And we'll see just how much drama there is for that. That shouldn't be that much. I'm crossing them over just like I took them off. You guys are not going to be able to see this very well. Yeah, this is. I'm not going to be able to show you this very well because my fingers and everything has to get in the way for me to get it done. So I'm just going to kind of put it down in there. That one slid on no, no dramas. And we'll go ahead and move this over a little and get this one on. Oh, you know what? Now that we've moved these, I'm changing the way this, these pins went in. Now you can do that because they were crossed out like this before because the shifters were, these shifters were so close together, right, that we had a lot more of this wire to reach these pins. We have a pin here on the left side and the right side here and here, right? So now... I'm going to, because I've spread them out so far, I'm going to reinstall them differently. So this one will go here, where it, before it went, this shifter wire will go, used to go over there, right? So now I'm going to put it over here, because I don't have as much wire left. And I'm going to do the same thing with this one. It was over here, but I'm going to put it over there. No big deal, just things that, you know, you got to pay attention to when you're doing this. And being shifters, it doesn't matter. It's not going to mess anything up, because we assign the shifters in the game so it doesn't matter which plug we have them on what matters is we actually have them securely plugged on there that's the important part so i'm going to wiggle this thing down here and you guys can't see this but it actually goes on pretty easy i like the way he did this and there's one on and then i'll just go ahead and get the other guy on there i kind of like push it down past the pins a little bit and then kind of slide it forward and it feeds right on there we go so there we're done Whoop, so you can see it so now we're all back together, and the only issue will be as I'm putting this back together is these wires themselves. I want to make sure that they're not sandwiched anywhere in here, and they have room, right? So as I take this, I'm going to bring it over here, you can see it, and just kind of lay it back on here, and I'm going to kind of get the cable gable part lined up first as I'm setting this down. And now I can look down in here and see where these shifters are going and where the shifter wires are going this wire needs to be pulled out or it would be pinched in. All right, so I'm just going to kind of take my pointer here. See how it popped into that little piece there? And I'll do the same thing with this one. Well, I might be getting my fingers on this one. Maybe not. Yeah, there we go. All right, so now we're clear on both of these wires. See how they're kind of we're in these notches that are left in the back of the shifter housings. So hopefully, now we should be able to get everything to go in. So I'm going to kind of of course, we've got these shifters all the way out now, so it might be a little snugger than it was before. And there it goes. Just kind of work my way around this thing with my thumbs as I'm kind of pressing down and seeing how everything is. There we go. See how everything's going on. And again, making sure that my wires are not pinched anywhere. That looks good. There we have it. 
All right, we can see a lot now, can't we? <laughs> it's, just, it's a good deal, though. It's going to allow the heat to roll out, so it's going to run cooler. <laughs> so now it's just a matter of taking the screws, we, the four or five we took out before, and screwing those back in. And like I said, this is pretty easy stuff. Like I said, I always say if I can do it, I think most anyone can do this. And we have five of these screws to put in, and we will be done. And I don't put them in tight as I'm going in with them initially. I'm just kind of getting them to go. And then I'll come back and do my final snug up. Again, this being 3D PLA printed material, you don't need to put a lot of torque on this when we're tightening things up. And there's the center one. And again, I just kind of take my fingers on the knobs and fingertips so I don't over torque anything. Just snug it up and that'll be fine. Because the real pressure that's going to be put on this is going to be when the hub is on. And there's not going to be a lot of pressure on this as far as trying to pull it out. There's not going to be any forces trying to separate this. So you don't need to get it super tight and then strip something out and then you're messed up. So there it is. All right. So yeah, these <laughs> shifters are definitely sticking out like elephant ears now. <laughs> They're way out. So that's great. I like the fact that you have so much adjustability as far as the width of these shifters. That's pretty, pretty generous, I think. In fact, that's probably might be a little bit too far, but we'll wait until we get the wheel and everything put on to see how it finally looks when we get it done at that point. So, yeah, easy enough to do. Just want to make sure you guys saw how I did that. And, yeah, we'll move on to what we'll do is go ahead and put the wheel on, right? So we'll put our spacer back here like this. Then we're going to put our hub on, which is our HRS hub, well, our hub adapter, really. And then we're going to put the wheel on, the 20 wheels going on the, the front here like this. R20, I think that's the R20, yes it is. And then we're going to put our turn racing badge on there too. So when we come back, it'll all be assembled and we'll take a look at it. So we have everything assembled now on the wheel. I thought I'd give you guys a quick look at that. The shifters are in a, are wide enough for me to shift very comfortably. And yeah, if you have a small hand like I do, or even a smaller hand, these come out so wide that I couldn't ever imagine someone not being able to reach the shifters. And they're very quiet. If you need a quiet shifter setup, then yeah, obviously the spring type of shifter is the way to go here. And another thing I noticed uh, that I wanted to show you guys is because I've moved these shifter housings all the way out to the limits of what the adjustability is, there is a little bit of flex in the plate here where it mounts is these two G2. Well, actually, there's a 3D plate on the bottom of the shifter. Let's see how this is going to show up here. Uh, here we go. All right, so there's a 3D piece here that the spring is, is going through, but there's also a thinner G10 piece. So it's a little stack there, right? But because I have this all the way out, and there's actually, let's see if we can see that here. It's all the way out. Hmm, I'm not getting a good, not getting the angle I want. Hmm. All right, so there we made that's better right there. All right, so because they're hanging all the way out, we don't have any support right in here for this. So there is a little flex, and I'll show you that, if you shift with a firm shift. See that? But if you're a light shifter, it really doesn't really move that much, it doesn't look like. But still, it will move, but because it's all the way out. And of course, the further we move this in, the less that'll happen. Now, because these are spring shifters, it's kind of irrelevant, because you don't feel it anyway when you're shifting. I didn't feel it. It just felt like I was you know, using a spring shifter. That's it. But yeah, very quiet. If you need something... Uh, you know, don't want to bother anybody with your click, click, clicks on like a magnetic shifter in the next room. It's somebody trying to sleep or study or what have you. Yeah. But if you're in mom's basement or you're in the closet down the hall, then it probably won't make a difference either way. So, and it doesn't make a difference to me here at the SRG because it's an isolated place. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, everything's working great. The buttons lined up. One thing, I, another thing I want to show you here is with this R20 wheel mounted, you can see we have a lot of clearance here on this selector here, all right? And whereas when we had the R1, when I showed you that, the example of having R1 mounted, yeah, it was very, very close. Even though it wasn't actually hitting, it was very close. So here we have obviously more room. But curious thing here is that we still have some coverage here of the label on these outer buttons here, right? Which again, to me, really doesn't matter. I mean, it's it's one of those things where I never use what they say it's supposed to be on there anyway, usually. So I'm, I'm just assigning buttons as I need them and really not paying attention to what the labels are doing. But just something, you know, if you're using an R20, 
Yeah, you can see it's covering, even with the R20, it still covers the labels a little bit there. All right. Of course, this is an early R20. I don't know if, if there's any change to the R20 as far as, you know, uh, turn racing has done anything to make this lower or whatever. But yeah, with the one I have, that's, that's what we see. Okay. Anything else we want to talk about here? And I think that's about it. And of course, we can see down inside still in between there, the wires and some of the circuit board stuff because of the gap when we slid these shifters out, like I showed you when we finished doing that. All right, so all we have to do now is mount this puppy and do some driving. I'll probably go through a quick what I, how I'm doing this. And again, I'm actually uh, assigning uh, black boxes to this. So in the off position or the first position, I can scroll through my black boxes plus or minus. Then I'll go to the first position or the first click I'm calling it. And then I can go to scroll through those black boxes that I've already selected, whichever one it is, to get to where I want to be as far as selecting something. And then I'll go to the second click and yeah, select to actually adjust or make adjustments or increment, increment or decrements. Decrements? Decrements. <laughs> In other words, up or down with the value, whatever it is I'm using. So yeah, and then the thing, cool thing about this is you can always remember, even if you lose where your click count is, you can always come back home to where it stops, right? And then you can count your clicks again. So if I had... Uh, the black box is on one, two, then I know three and four may, might be uh, my uh, brake bias, my ARB adjustments, things like that. So I can always come back home if I forgot and then count my clicks again and then go and adjust what I need to. So it really works. It's pretty intuitive, more than you would think probably for me trying to explain it to you. But yeah, when I'm using it, it never had a problem. So we'll go ahead and mount this to the wheel and do some driving and see how it works. So here we are in iRacing and I'm going to show you how I use this selector button and yeah I'm going to go ahead and use one of the top buttons to get in the car and at the off position is how I'm going to be going between my black boxes using the two blue buttons the plus and minus so in that position I'll go over and be able to go through my different black boxes and once I find the black box that I want then I'll use the turn it one click and then I'll use the buttons to navigate to what I want to select in that box. And then once I have that, I'll click it again and that's the second click and then I can actually adjust whatever I've selected. And it looks, it's pretty intuitive, like I said before. You can always turn it back to home and that's where it is now in the off position, if you will. And yeah, it goes back to the black boxes. You can go where you want to and there you have it. Pretty simple, really. So now let's uh, go ahead and drive this and talk a little bit about what's going on as we drive it. So here we are in iRacing at Sebring and the Ferrari 488 GT3. And let's talk about the shifters first. And I'm going to do some downshifting here as we go to the hairpin. There we go. Yeah, the first thing I noticed was the light pull compared to, you know, I, I use magnetic shifters on a regular basis normally. And this is a lighter pull. And I was resting my fingers on them and I, I rest my fingers on with a little bit more tension on, because I've been using magnetic and I was getting some ghost shifting, but I quickly realized what I was doing and just kept my fingers off the shifter paddles. <laughs> so anyway, a good spring tension on these, I think for me, of course that's all subjective. You know, some people might disagree with that or agree. And, but it gets the job done. You know, you never miss a shift. There's ultra quiet shifters. If you need that function in your shifters, this is definitely the kind of shifter you want to get because it's very, very quiet. Even the, the click of the switch is very quiet. So if you don't want to disturb someone while you're doing your racing, then this would be the definite route to go for paddle shifters. Other than that, you know, it's just, it, it's, it's a paddle shifter, it does the job. You know, it's, it's nothing special, nothing, you know, as you might imagine, it just gets the job done and it never failed me. I never had a miss shift or anything like that. Just the initial, you know, I tend to rest my fingers on the shifter paddles as I'm driving. So I was just not as able to do that with these because they were so you know, easy to pull on compared to a magnetic. But again, easy to adjust to, no problems there. So a good build on these shifters. I haven't tried the carbon fiber ones that are on the, uh, the PS Mod 27, but I, I would imagine it's pretty close to what you feel with these. Right, so yeah, we already talked about the selector uh, knob there with the 12 different positions and using the two blue buttons to navigate whatever you are adjusting at the time. And again, that became more intuitive to use that than you would probably think. 
because if you ever get lost, you can just spin the thing right back to where it stops on the off and then you're back to, and then you can count your clicks off and get the back to where you were. So really something that is functional. You know, when I first saw it, I said, well, geez, you, who's gonna remember all that? But yeah, if you do it, you saw in the method a lot of times when, to, when it comes to using things and using them successfully. So yeah, not much else to report here. You know, it works as designed. I think it has, especially for the size and it, the price range this comes in at $300, you get 28 functions and a couple of shifters. Um, you know, it's, it's a pretty good deal, I think. I mean, especially if you're trying to put a wheel together, you can definitely spend a heck of a lot more on, on a button plate than this. And if you got an economy wheel, like a $50 wheel and bolted to this thing, then you, you know, you got a $350 wheel, you know, that's a lot less than even some of the Fanatic upper end stuff goes for. So, and it'd be a perfectly functioning wheel, as you can see here. So again, I, I like to see the cost for this stuff kind of trickling down a little bit as it were and i know a lot of people are gonna say what are you talking about three hundred dollars for a button plate but yeah you can always build one yourself and do it a lot cheaper but it it won't be you know a package like this obviously so yeah how much to see here um, we'll just go ahead and get to the final thoughts final thoughts on the ps mod 27 lc wheel button box from penguin rc you know, building a custom wheel set up for your sim racing duties is something a lot of guys eventually want to do. It's nice to have options when trying to decide what you think you want or need when it comes to this decision. And here is a company that may have what you're looking for. The 27LC Button Box is a well-sorted build, I think, made from stiff and durable G10 plates and 3D printed PLA filament. It is light as well as strong. And weight is one of the things to consider when putting together a wheel that will match well with the power levels your wheelbase is able to deliver. The buttons used on the 27LC seem to be of a pretty good quality. I've tried many different buttons in this style, and these seem to be among the ones that have felt good to me. I like the way that Brian has maximized the functionality of such a small space. Using a selector switch paired with two buttons to deliver 24 separate functions is a great idea. The shifters on this plate are of the spring design. While they don't deliver the level of tactile feedback we get from magnetic style shifters, they do the, get the job done without any dramas. And they do bring their own benefits to the table. If you need a quiet shifter so as not to disturb those around you while racing, then this is the style that will meet that requirement. Now, at a price of $300, I think this button plate deserves a look if you are looking to build a custom wheel setup without breaking the bank. I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.